What's going on everybody? Enzo here from Enzo's Geckos. Today we're doing a little bit different kind of video. Today I'm going to be talking a little bit about the history of the G Project Clown. People have asked me about this um, morph, this tangerine line, so many times and today I finally wanted to make a video explaining a little bit about the background behind it, you know, what comprises of the G Project Clown, where it originated from, what does the G and G Project Clown even stand for, and um, what other projects being used in today because as you guys probably know, much of my breeding is focused on the G Project clowns. And um, of course, I wanted to let you guys know a little bit more about it and educate you guys more about this morph just because it is a relatively new um, tangerine line that not many people know about. So uh, let's get right into it, guys. Before the video starts, I would like to thank Hunter Manley from Manly Geckos, John Scarborough from Gecko Boa, John Byer from JB Leopard Geckos, Russell Bug from Ruckus Geckos, and Andy Fox from Spotty Tail Geckos. They have granted me permission to use information and photos with credit to them, and this video wouldn't be possible without their contributions. First, we're going to start off where G Project came from, and eventually how it got to the G Project clowns that we have today. So the G Project originated from Sasebeck Reptiles and was created by the man behind the operation, Matt Baranek. He began working on the G Project in 2004 to 2005, as he says, when he uploaded a video called What is G... Dot, 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 part 1 in 2012, where he specified it was only a project and that the G didn't actually stand for green, contrary to most people's beliefs. He elaborated that the G project started as a byproduct from another project. That project involved raptors and eclipses, where the G project evolved from. You will see leopard gecko breeders selling their G project clowns labeled as very low possible hat raptor because of this. Barnuck explains that the original lineage of the G project came from his former business partner Alberto of A&M Gecko. The morphs consisted of jungle giants and HQ line red stripes, in which he selectively bred that served as a foundation for the G project. He selectively bred those offspring and eventually added a pair of emerines from Ron Tremper to add a little bit more green to his project. However, some of the first offspring he produced from those pairings were raptors, which proved that the animals were Het Tremper and Eclipse, so it took some time for him to work towards Het free animals like he wanted. Het stands for heterozygous, which basically means that an animal carries a recessive gene like Eclipse or Tremper albino without actually visually showing it. So by looking at a gecko, there's no way to tell and the only way to figure out if it is truly heterozygous for a recessive gene is to test it out, which he did. After working on this project for a few years, by 2009, Matt was pleased by how the project was turning out and decided to call it the name G Project in order to assure the other hobbyist breeders that it was a project, not its own morph. He reveals in his 2012 YouTube video that the G in G Project actually comes from Gatorade when he watched a commercial that Gatorade released in 2009. It was an inside joke to himself, and even over 10 years later, most people in the hobby don't actually know that it stands for Gatorade, and most people still assume that it just stands for green. Barnock's male that he used to work on the G project was named CT because of his excellent carrot tail. CT was crossed into white and yellows and other tangerines as the G project evolved and was divided into many different lines, one of which became the clown line. On Salsebeck Reptile's Facebook page, Matt Baronuk created an album dedicated to the clown project, which he started in 2012. The description of the post gives details of the lineage and lines involved in the clown project, and boy is it a mouthful. The clown project came from crossing his G project to a line of high contrast tangs, as he puts it, which happened to be the electric line. The post gives a detailed list of the lines involved. This is very important because keeping reliable, solid documentation is incredibly important when new projects or new morphs are about to be created or are being worked on. The clowns we know and love today consist of a and Jungle Giant, HQ Line Red Stripes, Emerines, Alvi Tangs, Nevis Tangs, H&M Tangs, Electric Tangs, and a touch of Bold Bandits. Wow, that's a lot. Honestly, I get butterflies in my stomach when I look back and see all of the beautiful clowns that Baronuk posted on Sasebeck Reptiles Facebook. It's absolutely beautiful and amazing to see the, where the lineage and where the clowns actually started, and to see how much they've evolved and how similar they've still stayed. Everything was looking great for this project until something big happened. Baronuk and Sasebeck Reptiles retired from breeding leopard geckos. However, the future for these beautiful animals had not come to an end. Hunter Manley from Manly Geckos purchased Matt's old breeders and was then the largest producer of G Project clowns according to Hunter. Over the years, Hunter continued to refine the clowns and cross them into other tangerine lines for spectacular results. Hunter added Rainbow Red Stripe and Blood Emery into the mix and produced some absolutely stunning crosses. His most recent cross, before Hunter retired, was a clown Inferno cross, which proved to be a stunner. 
Hunter's Crosses were personally my favorite, especially because I got my hands on all of them. The Blood Emerines, the Rainbow Red Stripes, and the Inferno Clown Crosses. I'm very lucky to have these ones, and I want to represent the Tangerine Clown line as much as I can while working on these in the future. Clowns are becoming more popular today as breeders rave over their jungle patterns, carrot tails, and numerous colors. Some breeders like John Byer from JB Leopard Geckos offers pure, uncrossed clowns that represent the clown line well. I even bought a few from him that just laid eggs. John Scarborough from Gecko Boa also offers magnificent tangerines with original clown lineage. I haven't seen him release any pure clowns as they are generally hard to come by, but nevertheless he still has stunning crosses that he usually posts on his website. A friend of mine, Russell Bug from Ruckus Geckos, has also produced some insane clowns that many breeders and hobbyists keep their eyes on. I think Russell is working with some top-notch stuff, so I went ahead and purchased a trio of his original clowns from him. I recommend you check out his Facebook because Russell has some truly stunning animals and is continuing to work on this clown line. Another good friend of mine, Andy Fox from Spotty Tail Geckos, also works with clown crosses. He has some Inferno lineage in his collection that looks very promising when crossed with his clowns. Andy is such a big supporter of me on my YouTube channel that he even named one of his geckos after me. I'd like to thank him on this YouTube channel really quick, so thanks Andy so much for that. Alright guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's video and learned something new about my favorite line bread tangerine. If you guys would consider subscribing, liking, and leaving a comment, it really helps out my channel. Also, think about sharing with a friend who might be interested in leopard geckos because I think this is a great channel for anybody who's new and getting into the hobby, or even other breeders that don't know a lot about these lines, because a lot of the, a lot of us take these lines for granted and don't really look back at the history of them, and I thought that would be really cool if I made a video like this, because I don't see videos like this anywhere else on YouTube. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time.